Hey everyone, in today's video I want to demonstrate how you can use polypaint to design your shapes and then use it as a base to create these kinds of framings for your objects. Before we start, I would like to announce that I now have a free beginner hard surface course for ZBrush. In this course, I will guide you through the ZBrush UI and introduce you to the main tools we will be using. We we'll start with a warm-up exercise to practice the necessary workflows and then we we'll dive right into the creation of a VR headset, step by step. So if you're just starting out or want to have a more detailed explanation of my workflows, this course is perfect for you. You can access the course through the link in the description. Alright, so in order to paint on this mesh, we first need to establish some even topology. To do that, I'm first going to give some proper polygroups to this mesh to help out zero measure. I like to use group by normals for these kind of primitive shapes. So it will look at the angle of the normals of your mesh and determine which surface to give a separate polygroup. So the default is by 45, which is great in this case. You can find this under tools, then polygroups and groups by normals. So once we have that, I can come to my quick menu and then activate keep groups, turn smooth groups down and let's choose a poly count by 2000 and let's hit zero mesh. All right, so that looks nice. Now I'm going to subdivide this a few times. Let's see how much, uh, I think 2.5 is a nice poly count to paint on. So let's turn it on symmetry and I will also activate the X and Z symmetry and also let's fill in this mesh with a color and let's choose a nice bright red orange. Right, that looks nice. So I made a custom paintbrush that always draws with maximum intensity and also has almost no fall off. The way you can make this brush is by going to the paintbrush BPA and so the custom settings for the paintbrush look like this which is not very helpful for the workflow we are going to do. So to get maximum intensity and also no size difference in your paintbrush you have to change the settings in the brush palette. So you can either go in here or I have a dock to the left side. You go to brush and then tablet pressure. And what you need to do is you go to the size and turn this all the way up as well as the RGB intensity and also turn this all the way up. So now it will give this effect. You can also go in the brush settings and turn the focus shift to something like minus 75. And now your brush is going to behave like this, which is really nice. So once you have set your brush settings, we can start to paint on this mesh. First, I will select the mask rectangle brush. And I'm going to mask this portion, invert the mask, and then fill this with a color. So fill a color, you can find it under color and then fill object. And I have that key map to control F because I'm using this a lot. And now I can freely paint on the smash and come up with interesting patterns and ideas. And now you're probably asking, so why am I not simply only using masking for this kind of work? The reason I like to kind of paint in my ideas first is I'm still able to manipulate the mesh. If I had this portion mask, I would not be able to do that. I would always have to clear my mask and redo it when I want to move my mesh or do a certain operation. So now I can still come in and for example use a clip brush or let's delete the lower subdivision. I can mask out a portion Control W, give this another polygroup. Control Shift this polygroup. Control Alt and move 
this polygroup in with an additional polygroup. Let's activate local symmetry. Scale this in. Control click the surface to blur the mask one more time. And now we can use polish by feature, which is under tools, deformation, polish by feature. And that way you get a really nice inset like so. And now I can still kind of mask around these portions. And, and what I like to use to round up these corners is a really cool macro, which you can find under macro and apply round corners to mask. I of course have it in my quick menu. Apply right corners, I'm gonna press it a few times. We'll see, I'm going to wrap the color I'm hovering over with my cursor. I'm gonna invert the mask by control clicking the canvas and control F to fill this with a color. Maybe I want to make this strip a bit thicker. Or I want to stretch the design a bit further. And so once I'm happy with the design, what I would do next is then hit groups from polypaint. You can also find this under tools, polygroups, and from polypaint. So now ZBrush use the polypaint to create a new polygroup, like so. Now I will fill this with gray again, duplicate the mesh, go into solo mode. And so after we duplicate it, what I will do is control click this point in time in the history because we later are going to use this to project our separated mesh back on this base mesh right here. So now I'm going to grab this piece, delete hidden. And now I will use polish by feature open circle to clean this up. Let's choose a target number of 10,000 and it's zero mesh. Let's do another polish. And let's go by half a few times until we get a nice result like so. And now to have this mesh lying perfectly on top of this mesh, which it probably already does, but anyway, we can now hit project history and now it's like perfectly sitting on top. Now we've got this, I can go into my dynamic thickness. Let's turn on dynamic, turn up thickness, turn off post subdiv offset of 100 and let's make this a bit thicker let's give this also a few more segments maybe a little bit thicker even and let's give this a darker color and yeah that is how i create all sorts of shells or supporting elements to my meshes if you want a more in-depth explanation of my workflows or want to understand zbrush better look at my free beginner hard surface course which I designed to be easy to follow if you're just starting out. You can find the link in the description. Until then guys, take care.